Hi everyone, and welcome back to the channel. You'll have to forgive my appearance. I just came back from a pool day with my kids, um, the second in a row. It's Sunday afternoon and we are finishing out quite a, a fun family weekend. And so I figured I would record a video at this point that talks about something that's been on my mind, but is maybe a little bit different than some of the themes that we've addressed before. And that is why my family doesn't typically travel in the summer. Um, one of the first things that you'll often hear from people around our town or you know, even online is what are you doing this summer? What are your summer plans? And often that revolves around summer vacations or holidays. And we usually don't travel in the summer. We usually travel in the shoulder seasons uh, favorites for us are fall trips in October, November, or spring travel, usually in the months of February through April. And there are several reasons for this. The first main one has to do, of course, with costs and crowds. You know, this is the high travel season. Many people with kids in school are restricted to travel at this time of year. And so I'm sure you've seen in the news, places like Europe have ridiculous lines at tourist sites, airports, the crowds are wild. And of course the ticket and hotel prices go along with that. I did a previous video on how to find cheap flight deals on Skyscanner, which I'm linking above. So you'll see the link in the top right-hand corner of your screen. I also did one on Google Flights, linked above as well. And what you'll see if you do a search for end of August, beginning of September, is that there is a substantial drop in airfare costs after Labor Day. And that's not a surprise because many people will travel during the month of August, but will not travel during the month of September because of their kids being back in school. And the jury's out on this, whether you, know, you should or shouldn't pull your kids from school for a family trip. My wife and I have spoken about this at length. We are of the view that a short-term trip abroad where there's a substantial cultural experience is education in and of itself. And so we're not so worried about that, especially with our kids being young. As they get older, they get more involved with schoolwork and sports. We may change our view, but for now, we try to take full advantage of this. Now, for many people, that is the number one reason why they choose not to travel in the summer. We actually have several others. So another one for us has to do with weather. We are really fortunate to live in a place that has beautiful summers. In fact, the weather here is pretty much great with the exception of some rain from the month of April through the beginning of October. And so we are really of the view that unless there's a compelling reason, we try to travel when the weather at home is not so great to places that have better weather. Community is also another factor. And many people who travel frequently or have lived in different places might not necessarily place a high value on developing roots or connecting with the community. For us, it's really all about balance. So we certainly see the value in moving around and having different experiences. But we also try to integrate ourselves as much as possible into the local community of wherever we live. And because winters are not great here, people really come out of hibernation in spring, summer, and fall, especially summer. And so that is the time to meet your neighbors, to meet your children's classmates and their parents and really to substantially develop those community connections. So essentially those are the reasons why we prefer to travel in the off season. The question then becomes what do you do with your kids all summer and so we've had conversations at length about day camp, you know, a few days a week, full week, sleep away, costs and benefits and gone back and forth and what we've settled on for our family based on our circumstances is to join our town pool and so we joined our town pool this summer i'm going to be there every weekend with the family my wife plans to take the kids during the week as well 
And it's really been a great experience in terms of developing those relationships with our local community. And so uh, this is what we're doing this summer. The kids are really excited. They're going to learn how to swim, take swim lessons. There's so many benefits to joining a local pool. And I have added in some videos here and some clips from our local pool just to give you an idea of what that might be like if you haven't joined a town pool. Uh, just uh, seeing the kind of day-to-day -day situation and what your kids can experience. Of course, joining the pool is not going to be our only activity. We try to keep a busy social calendar going to events with friends and family throughout the year, especially in the summer. And we always take our kids so we just spend a nice weekend with friends uh, up north where there's a little more space and a little more greenery. And our kids really appreciated exploring and learning about nature. So these are just some ideas. Of course, everyone's different. I'm sure you'll have a great summer regardless of what you do. If you are traveling, good luck. I'm sure you'll make the most out of it. And um, just be mindful of the crowds and the wait times and the costs, but as long as you've, you're fine with that and this is what you wanna do, I'm sure you'll have a great time. So short video today, just wanted to talk about this. Please comment below, let me know what you do with your family, when do you travel? Uh, what do you do in the summer if you don't travel in the summer? And share your views on whether or not you think it's okay to take kids out of school for a trip and does it matter what type of trip it is how long, etc. Until then, take care. Have a great week.